The Sinaloa Cartel, or Cartel de Sinaloa in Espanol, is a massive transnational criminal organization with a focus on criminal activities, and a lot of them. CDS, Guzman Lueta Organization, Pacific Cartel, Federation, and Blood Alliance are all names for this group. It was founded in the late 1980s as one of several plazas throughout Mexico that reported directly to the Guadalajara Cartel. The company's headquarters is in Culiacán, Sinaloa, Mexico, although it conducts business on a global scale from there. Many people consider the Sinaloa Cartel to be the most formidable drug trafficking organization in the world. They believe that it's even more effective and influential than Colombia's iconic Medellín Cartel, for they were during their heyday. With Mexico, the Golden Triangle comprises the states of Sinaloa, Durango, and Chihuahua, and is the cartel's primary area of operation. Marijuana and opium are grown commercially in this area of Mexico. Law enforcement agencies often seize the most fentanyl in the world in this golden triangle, usually in the form of kilos of powder or pressed pills. Watch this video to find out if the Sinaloa cartel is losing its power, or are they still in control of Mexico? You'll have to stay with us till the very end to find out more. Ismael El Mayo Zambada Garcia and Joaquin El Japo Guzman's sons, Jesus Alfredo Guzman Salazar, Ovidio Guzman Lopez, and Ivan Archivaldo Guzman Salazar, run the organization since their father's capture in 2016. However, reports from multiple credible sources indicate that a power struggle is well underway within the organization, between the Guzman and Zambada camps. After the imprisonment of El Chapo's son, Ovidio Guzman, the cartel allegedly went to war with the Mexican National Guard, and El Mayo allegedly refrained from sending in his men to intervene. This sparked, or intensified, the enmity between the two factions of the cartel. Most drug cartel gunmen in Mexico's major cities operate undercover. They wait in ambush or safe houses before carrying out an assassination or gun battle and then just vanish. People in the area are afraid of them, and they know they exist, but they're usually unable to see them. However, on Thursday, the cartel gunmen were all over the city of Culiacan in Sinaloa. For all to see, they drove around in trucks armed with machine guns, barricaded roadways while brandishing Kalashnikovs, and set fire to vehicles, creating smoke plumes reminiscent of a scene from Syria. At least eight people were killed as they gained support and control of the important locations in the metropolitan region. They shut down the airport, the roadways, the government offices, and fought with security forces for hours. In contrast, the rest of us had to play the part of ghosts, hiding inside with the doors locked and not daring to venture outside. And the Sinaloa cartel emerged victorious from this extraordinary conflict. Ovidio Guzman, the 28-year-old son of jailed kingpin Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, was arrested in a house raid on Thursday, prompting the rebellion. U.S. Attorney General Jeff Sessions announced Ovidio Guzman's indictment for drug trafficking in February. However, the federal government of Mexico finally gave the army the order to release him after hours of cartel mayhem. Finally, it gave in. After 18 years of reporting on Mexico's drug violence, during which I saw many incredible events, I've written two books about it. I've spent a lot of time in the mountains around Guzman's opium-growing town in Sinaloa, which was the birthplace of drug smugglers, following the trail of bullet-riddled bodies. The situation changed, though. On Thursday, it, it was an uprising of people, not a gang war. Vladimir Ramirez, a political scientist in Culiacan, echoes the sentiments of many by saying, There was panic. Horror. The city was under siege. It was common practice for people to fall asleep everywhere that they happened to be. No one wants to go out, and thus, stores are closed. The transition didn't occur instantly. This violent pattern emerged after years of insurgent strategy development by drug cartels. Cartels now employ the tactic of burning down cars in order to obstruct the passage of troops and exert pressure on the government, which they stole from radical demonstrators. The cartels are now well-armed because to the constant flow of firearms from the United States and the stolen military weaponry they've acquired. More than 150,000 guns were discovered to have originated in the United States between 2007 and 2018. Additionally, cartels have learned to safeguard their leaders with rings of gunmen, who might cause havoc and prevent their apprehension from the Texas border to Guadalajara. According to Raul Benitez, an authority on armed conflicts in Latin America, the Sinaloa Cartel exhibited a phenomenal ability to deploy fast and take effective control of the city. Yet they proved to everyone that they're the ones in charge of Sinaloa. 
The Mexican military, on the other hand, was in shambles. Officials' claims regarding the motivations of the troops' solo raid on Guzman's home were inconsistent and unclear. The cartel gunmen were able to operate freely in several parts of the city. Stories circulated that the cartel had taken hostages among the military and threatened to kill them. And given these specific circumstances, President Andres Manuel López Obrador said Friday that it was best to let the culprit go free. To put out a fire with more fire is a bad idea. The elimination of life is not desired. We don't want conflict, López Obrador stated at a press conference that morning. We shall ensure national security and calm with justice. López Obrador was elected president in a landslide last year and continues to poll well with voters. A number of people backed his action on Thursday to prevent additional violence. Ramirez, the political scientist in Culiacán, believes that the gunmen in Culiacán were not attacking civilians, but the menace was evident that they might have unleashed a slaughter. It was a threat of terrorism, Ramirez recalls. The government acted with considerable responsibility. Still, others said López Obrador had capitulated to criminals by doing so. His vision of peace and love doesn't work, according to Benitez. He's strengthening the cartel. When asked about his plan of action, I mused, I have no idea. The release of Guzman by the Mexican government has raised concerns that it will become a trend. If other traffickers are arrested, their comrades could kidnap people to demand their release. Also, the cartel's apparent superiority over the military raises questions about the country's ability to, well, maintain order. Some of the residents of Sinaloa, Mexico, refer to drug traffickers as valientes, which means brave ones. Seemingly, these rebels are now in position of near total power. Drug ballots, sometimes known as narco corridos, reflect this sympathetic view of drug dealers. After the violence on Thursday, many musicians wrote new songs with lyrics about Ovidio Guzman and uploaded them to the web. It's been said that Ovidio Guzman is being kidnapped. A vocalist belts out, The Sior, they won't take him prisoner. In one of the many songs on the current mobilizations, there is a war, and we want to participate in it. Both recently and historically, the Sinaloa cartel has been the dominant drug cartel, most closely associated to Mexico's narco culture. Cartel land, locked up abroad, the Shabu Trap, and Clandestino are just a few of the documentaries that have focused on the group. Vice News features and documentaries routinely discuss the cartel. In 2020, December episode of Trafficked, which she hosts for National Geographic, Mariana Van Zeller investigated the cartel's illegal fentanyl operations. Films, television shows, books, and music have all depicted Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, the most well-known head of the Sinaloa cartel. And this includes not only Mexican narco corridos, but also American rap and hip-hop. After Forbes magazine listed El Chapo as the 701st wealthiest person in the world in 2009, the number 701 began appearing on a wide variety of products and items sold in Mexico, especially in the state of Sinaloa. Guzman was also apparently a lover of the narco novela, known as La Reina del Sur, which starred Mexican actress Kate del Castillo. After publishing an open letter to Guzman in 2012 in which she expressed sympathy and asked him to traffic in love instead of drugs, Ms. del Castillo was contacted by Guzman's lawyers in 2014. Following a 2015 prison escape, Guzman allegedly attempted to collaborate with Del Castillo on a film about his life. Through a common contact, American actor Sean Penn learned of the link with Miss Del Castillo and requested if he might join them for an interview. Several days after meeting Penn and Kate Del Castillo in early 2015, Guzman had a near miss. An unnamed Mexican official has confirmed that the meeting was instrumental in leading Mexican Marines to a ranch near Tamazula, Durango in the Sierra Madre Mountains in western Mexico, where they found Guzman. After intercepting his cell phone calls and receiving information from American authorities, Guzman managed to escape when the ranch invasion was met with heavy gunfire. El Chapo got way down a gully, and although he was spotted by a helicopter, he was with two women and a girl, and it was decided not to shoot. The Attorney General of Mexico said, as it turned out, the two women were Guzman's personal chefs, following him from safe house to safe house. Guzman allegedly obscured himself as a target at one point by holding a child in his arms. Narcos, Mexico, a crime drama series on Netflix, also depicts the founding members in the early days of the Sinaloa Cartel. A fictitious account of the Sinaloa Cartel and its connections to the drug trafficking ring in the United States is presented by the Netflix series Queen of the South. Bruce Springsteen's Sinaloa Cowboys is found on his 1995 album The Ghost of Tom Joad, 
two Mexican brothers are introduced who eventually become engaged with the Sinaloa Cartel. The Sinaloa Cartel is presented as the primary antagonist of the fictional Navarro Cartel in the series that Netflix has called Ozark. Clint Eastwood's 2018 film The Mule features the Sinaloa Cartel as the film's primary antagonists. In this film, Laton and his assassin Gustavo run the cartel. Ernesto El Matador Zuiga, a vicious and powerful Mexican drug lord, heads the cartel in Tom Clancy's Against All Enemies. Zuiga is a rival of Jorge Rojas, the boss of the Juarez cartel and the novel's primary antagonist. So, this answers the question whether the Sinaloa cartel is losing its power or not. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, give this video a big ol' thumbs up, and share it with your friends. We'll see you guys in the next one.